Have you ever had to log into a load of Linux servers to manage your users? So say you've got system users you need to go and install on loads of machines, application users, service users, and you've manually had to go into all of these machines or a new user has started and you need to go and create their user and add their key across your entire estate. Today I'm going to be demonstrating to you how we no longer need to do that. And we can use the Ansible users module to create one, 10, 100, or even a thousand users and populate them across all of the servers. So firstly, here we have our hosts file. So we've got three servers. These are my demo servers that I've got. And we're going to be using these to create users. The next thing we're going to need is a playbook. Let's just call it playbook.yaml. And in here, we're going to be writing our code. So let's begin. Three dashes, one dash, hosts, and an all. Tasks. And our first task, which is to create a user. Now, if we head over to Ansible's documentation, it's actually really, really good at giving examples for us. So let's have a look down here. We can click on examples and here are some examples. I could copy and paste this directly into here. Format it a little bit better. Take out this Ansible built-in users and just have it like that and that will work. Let's make this look a little bit better. And that on its own will create me a user called John D with this UUID and this group. So let's go ahead and run that. So we're going to do an Ansible playbook dash I for inventory. It's hosts.txt. And then we're going to do playbook. My key is not on these servers and we're going to just run this as root. So we need a dash U root and we need a dash K so that it'll ask us for our password. I'm going to put in my password and it should go along and group admin doesn't exist. So this is what happens when you copy and paste guys. So we can see here that it's tried to create the group of admin and that doesn't exist. Let's take that out. We shouldn't need the group. And uh, let's go back up there. Now, if we did want that group, what we'd need to do actually is use the group module, first of all, to create the group and then go and create the user module to add the user to that group. So you can see that on these three servers here, it's been changed. I can actually go and log into one of these servers right now. Let's pick this one at random. And we can see John D has just been created. So that has worked. Now there's lots and lots of other things. Now that we've got that syntax done, if we have a look down here and scroll up, we've got all the parameters. So we've got a create home. So if we set that to false, it won't create a home directory, which can be quite good for some service accounts. If it make it generate an SSH key and there's hundreds or well not hundreds, there's many, many things down here. Um, more importantly, Password expiry dates, that's quite a good one to use and I've seen a lot of people doing that manually. We've also got a remove. So we can actually set a state of absent. So in order to delete these servers, if we scroll down a little bit here, we'll have a state somewhere. Here. The default is present, which means it'll create it. If I set that to absent, it will go and delete those users. Now this remove at the top here will actually then go and remove the home directories, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on, we can do an update password and um, it'll only update passwords if you set it in it's different to what's already there uh, and so on and so forth. So this is all well and good. This is creating a nice simple user, but we do have an issue here. One, we don't have a password, okay? And secondly, I'm not going to copy and paste this hundreds and hundreds of times. And for those that have seen 
my SSH key module, we're going to be using the same idea to create many users. So we need a variables file and we're going to call it users.yaml. And before we start writing into users.yaml, we need to make sure that we can get to that variables file. So that's our vars file. And it is called users.yaml. So that now allows us to use the variable in this task. So down here, along with this user part here, we're going to do a with items and we're going to use a variable. Now let's use the variable user. I have been having a look at the analytics for the channel and 97, nearly 98% of my viewers that watch my videos have not subscribed. It really does help the channel out um, and ultimately I'm able to put out much better videos. Please, would you do me a favor? And if you gain any value or learn anything from any of the videos that I teach, really appreciate that you would subscribe. Thank you. And then in here, we've now got access to the item. So we can do item.user. Might have a comment. And that comment might be comment. Uh, we might have a UID called UID. So this should be all that we need to create a user. Now the important bit comes now in this file here. So it's a user. And then the interesting part then comes what we do after that. So we need put some things in. So what things did we have? We had a user, a command, command, comment, and a UID. So user, comment, UID. So we want user, comment, and a UID. Okay. So let's go with the user of um, Toby1. Toby. And we want the user ID uh, 2001. We also want Toby2. This is Toby2 and he has a UID of 2002, 2003 and so on. I'm just going to do these three for now. So just to explain, let's indent these. Here we go. So these three things here are still part of this user variable. So we're going to use each three of these lines in this with items. So the with items is going to iterate through user and that's here. Now let's be correct. It's users. So let's keep that to users. Now you, when, cause we've got the with items, we can then do the item dot. And then we've got item dot user, item dot comment and item dot U, U, uh, UID. It's just a UID. So if I now was to run this, We should end up with three users across these servers. Great. Let's go and SSH into that server. So we saw last time the last server that we had was a John D. So let's look in ETC password now. And we've got, look, Toby1, Toby2, and Toby3. And we've got a John D. Now, this is the blueprint. This is the boilerplate. We can extend this now. I, I, I saw earlier when I showed you guys there was a state. Okay. So let's set a state of present and absent. Okay, so we're going to have state. We can go over here now. We can do state present. We just take that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and have a new one. Look a bit better. And that was a John D. Can't remember what his UUID was. Let me go and have a quick look on the example 1040. State's going to be absent.
and that should be enough space this out a little bit better perfect so I've just very quickly just added something in there and I can go and come out of there on this playbook and what we should see is it will be green against all the user the Toby users but it should then actually show that it's changed by removing John here we are so it's changed one on each of them let's SSH into that server again etc password we can see john has gone however i bet you john still has a home directory yes he does so back over to the instructions look down the parameters and we do have a should have a path for remove so it's set to false, we can set it to two. True. So we can do this one of two ways. We can do it like that. Now this will still work. Now the reason that this will still work is because remove only actually works when you use state absent. Looking at the documentation. So... If you just leave it in there when it's just running, nothing will happen. Now this will happen on one thing, so most of the users will be fine, but John D should, oh it hasn't because it's already seen a state of absent. So let's go and put him back in. Run it again. This will go and add John again. And now if I set him to absent, it will remove it and it should. And the reason it did it before is because he was already absent. So while making him absent now, it should delete their home directory. So let's go and have a look. There we are. So I hope that's been useful. Um, again, the, I'll, I'll leave a link to this playbook, uh, the documentation, um, and this really is a very, very simple, quick way of managing users in Ansible. So thank you.